Well, at this point, I feel like all of my sit down videos are gonna be filmed on the floor because I'm too lazy to get my light ring out. My ring light, ring light out. God, pregnancy bright. Hello loves, welcome back to our channel. Why? Why do I say this every time? But it's been a while. It's been like two weeks, I think, since I've uploaded a video and I'm just, I'm a busy person. So I'm just gonna upload whenever it happens and I will probably continue to repeat myself and say that every single time I film a video. But I've had several of you on TikTok ask me to upload another video to YouTube or ask me when I'm gonna upload another video and I've just been so busy. I haven't had time to sit down and film this Q&A that I have promised you guys. So here it is. Today Hunter is at his grandma's house and I figured it would be a good day to sit down and do this video. So we're gonna do a little q and A. I I asked you guys on my TikTok and I believe on my Instagram and on YouTube to send me questions regarding surrogacy and my journey so that I could answer them in a video because I get literally the same questions over and over every single day and it'll be awesome to have this video to kind of like reference off of or send people to like kind of learn more about it. But yeah, let's uh, let's get into these questions. So first question is, what is it like explaining to people in public? So of course, I always get people in public complimenting me or congratulating me. And usually I will tell them, thank you. It's actually a surrogate baby. And immediately their eyes get big and they're like, oh, that's such an amazing thing to do. Usually they will say that. I don't think I've ever had someone be negative to me in person about being a surrogate. <laughs> Either they just congratulate me or they have like a ton of questions. <laughs> but yeah, I've, I've actually gone into like long conversations with people about it in person because they're just so interested in knowing more about it. Kind of like you guys are. But it's never really been super awkward. Maybe a tiny bit just because, you know, at first their initial reaction is like. Next question, do you have any regrets? No, I don't, I don't have any regrets about becoming a surrogate or even becoming a surrogate before we have a second child of our own. Because if you guys don't know, we are planning to try for a second child of our own after this surrogacy journey. And even though there is a slight possibility that we could not be able to conceive afterwards, we took that into our decision making. <laughs> Um, or took that into our decision of wanting to go through the surrogacy journey and we decided that we are okay if we can't have another one that I really wanted to help someone conceive and that was you know a tiny bit more important to me as with any pregnancy anything can go wrong with any pregnancy I know it's a little high more high risk with surrogacy but with any pregnancy you can have things go wrong that can make you not be able to conceive afterwards anyway so i just wanted to make sure that i could help someone out and so we took that into consideration when we made the decision together as a couple because surrogacy is definitely a decision that should be made as a couple because your husband's opinion matters just as much as yours so this is a really really common question i get and it's how much do you get paid now i've explained this several times on tiktok um i don't think i've explained this here i'm actually not legally allowed to share how much i specifically get compensated per my contract i can't talk about certain things about my surrogacy journey mainly about the baby and the mother like anything that can lead back to them or anything that the mother doesn't want me to share about her or her baby but also i cannot share specifics of my contract and that does include how much i am compensated 
but in all honesty I don't think I would be sharing exactly how much I get compensated even if I was allowed to just because it really doesn't matter and that's not the main reason why I'm doing surrogacy and really it varies for everyone. Every surrogate get comp gets compensated differently, every agency compensates differently, and even within the same agency a s this surrogate could be compensated differently than this surrogate. So every surrogate gets compensated differently depending on their state, depending on their agency, depending on their qualifications and stuff like that. It really kind of doesn't matter how much I specifically get compensated, <laughs> which is why I probably wouldn't share it even if I, even if I could. Are you worried about experiencing postpartum depression? Uh, this is definitely a great question. There's always a possibility to experience postpartum depression even as a surrogate or even especially as a surrogate because postpartum depression usually comes from and mainly comes from your hormones being out of whack after birth they're all trying to like you know get back to normal and so it just kind of creates that postpartum depression that a lot of women get but i feel like for some women postpartum depression also kind of gets heightened by caring for a newborn and everything that goes into caring for a newborn and for me that was the biggest and hardest part about becoming a mother so with surrogacy obviously i won't be caring for a newborn after i deliver and so i think that does at least in my situation hopefully contribute to not having or dealing with postpartum depression but it's always still a possibility because like i said the hormones are what mainly causes um postpartum depression this is another common question uh with covid are the baby's parents able to be in the delivery room and so i also just want to mention that um i am caring for just one woman she did use a sperm donor so it's only one parent an intended mother and she actually as of right now will not be able to be in the delivery room per the hospital's regulations they only allow one person in the delivery room uh due to covid for me my husband being in the delivery room is more important to me because he is my support system and in surrogacy they really really depend on you having a support system because surrogacy is a lot to go through it's not like normal pregnancy and so a support system is super important super important <laughs> and um so with that uh, my husband will definitely be the first one that's in the delivery room of course i would love for the mother to be in the delivery room if that changes but my doctor did say that she doesn't think that that will change when i am due or when i do deliver so for right now my husband will be the only one in the room next question is will the baby look like you at all or have any of your genes the simple answer is no baby will have 100 percent the dna and genetics of the mother and the sperm donor the baby does not even share blood with me the placenta is actually a filter that lets nutrients and stuff pass through but keeps mine and baby's blood separate and the dna and genetics of a baby is determined based on the egg that was used and obviously the the sperm <laughs> that is used so baby will not look like me at all do you get to pick the birth plan this is another good question um, and yes surrogates get to pick their birth plan because they are the one going through the birth um, so whatever they are comfortable with they get to determine that um, it is put in their profile before they're even matched what they prefer for their birth plan and what they're comfortable with so then the surrogate is matched accordingly with like the intended parent depending on if the intended parent would be okay with the surrogate kind of you know having medicated or unmedicated but usually the intended parents are okay with whatever the surrogate wants because the surrogate is going through it but i do know that there are intended parents that 
you know, are a little bit more strict on what they want for the pregnancy, which is why the profile of a surrogate is so important to be filled out very thoroughly and why it's such a lengthy um, application process. But for your information, I am planning on having a vaginal, natural, whatever you want to call it. I know some people say natural, some people say vaginal, um, but with epidural. So it will be a medicated vaginal birth, unless the doctor says otherwise or advises otherwise. <laughs> I have a lot of people asking me, how do you become a surrogate? Uh, and the re really the only way that I can think of to become a surrogate is to either go through an agency, which is the most common, um, or you can try to find someone that wants a surrogate, not through an agency, but that's gonna be a little bit more difficult unless you know like a family member or a friend who needs a surrogate. So the really the only advice I could give you is to apply to an agency and they can match you with an intended parent. How long was the overall process of becoming a surrogate? So my process was a little bit lengthy. Not everyone has a lengthy process to become a surrogate. It really depends on the person. But for me, since I had previous miscarriages, chemical pregnancies, it took me a little bit longer to get matched. It took me about nine months to get matched and I actually had to switch from one agency to another agency because it just had been like six months and they still couldn't get me matched. So I got transferred to a different agency and they matched me within like two, three months, I think three months. So it was a bit lengthy for me to even get matched and then after that, you know, you have medical screening and you have contract and then you start medications and stuff like that. So it can be a lengthy process, but it isn't for everyone. It really just depends on your uh, situation. Of course, the traditional question, when am I due? I am due November 29th, so right around Thanksgiving. And um, yeah, it's it's coming up close because as I'm filming this, I am 34 weeks today. It's, it's definitely getting close. Um, hopefully I'll film a pregnancy update today as well. Maybe I'll just do that straight after this. Yeah, getting close. Will you have any type of relationship with the mother or baby after the baby is born? So this actually depends on what the intended parent wants. I'm not quite sure where my intended mother stands on wanting a relationship afterwards. I don't know if she wants it to be more of a professional, like you give me a baby and that's it, or whether she does want to keep me updated with the baby and send me pictures and updates and stuff like that. It really is up to the intended parent. And with filling out your profile and doing your whole application process, you do have to put what you prefer, whether you would like a relationship with your intended parent or whether you don't or whether you're okay with either. And for me, I'm okay with either. If the intended mother wants to keep me updated and um, you know, share with me the growth and everything about the baby, um, and keep in touch. I'm totally okay with that. I would actually love that. But I'm also okay with, you know, respecting her privacy and her just not wanting any contact afterwards. You know, every intended parent is different. And with her being in China, it's, you know, definitely a little bit harder to keep in touch. So again, it's really just up to what the intended parent wants. Does your son think it's their sibling or does he understand the process? So if you don't know, my son is actually two years old and so he's at that age where he's like still a tiny bit too young. Probably would understand if we like really made an effort to make him understand. But in reality, we just really don't talk about it much to him because we don't want him to think that, you know, he's going to have a sibling. And so with that, I don't really think he even understands that I'm pregnant 
because we don't make a big deal about it. I've tried like showing him my belly and saying, oh, there's a baby in there, but I don't think he really understands. And honestly, I don't even really think he cares because he's just like not interested at all. But I definitely think that that's a good thing. I think it's good that he doesn't probably fully understand because I don't want him to you know, think that he's gonna have a sibling and be like really confused about me coming home with no baby. So yeah, I don't know. Maybe he just thinks that I'm getting fat or I don't know. You never know what toddlers think or what's going on in their head. <laughs> Another big question is, do you know the gender? Yes, I, I do know the gender of the baby that I am carrying. Me and the intended mother have known since the embryo transfer, but I am actually not able to disclose that as well. I haven't gotten permission from the mother to share that information. And so with that being said, I can't legally say what the gender is just for her privacy reasons. I know it's slightly weird because a lot of other surrogates actually do share a lot of information. I've seen surrogates share pictures and ultrasound pictures and stuff like that. I've seen them share pictures of the intended parents as well, but in my situation it's a little bit more private and I have to respect the mother's privacy just as I would with anyone else. You know, you don't, you wouldn't necessarily want someone going around sharing pictures of your child on the internet if you weren't okay with it um, or sharing information about your child that you weren't okay with. And so this is just one of those things that I have to, you know, respect her privacy on. Was your husband okay with what you are doing? Was he supportive? My husband was 100% supportive. From the moment I told him that I wanted to be a surrogate, he was like, you do you boo boo. I will be here to support you. If that's what you wanna do, then, then I'm here to back you up. I'm here for you. And I'm very, very grateful. I'm blessed to have him as a supportive husband because I know a lot of husbands wouldn't be okay with their wife carrying or partner carrying someone else's baby. It's, it's, it's understandable because it's a weird situation. It can be a weird situation. It could make them feel a little weird, I guess. Um, but with my husband, he's been very supportive. Yeah, I'm very grateful for that. Love you, hubs. <laughs> Is there a minimum or maximum age requirement to be a surrogate? Yes, uh, there definitely is. I don't know the specific because it could vary per agency. I think it's usually 21 to 40. Some agencies might allow someone to be 18 and older. Um, some agencies might want surrogates to be no older than 35 or it might be older than that. I don't know. Um, it's different for every agency. So if you are interested in it, I would definitely look into the agency that you would be going with and see what their um, age requirements are. Which leads me to another question that I get a lot. Um, what is the requirements for surrogacy? to be approved. Again, it does vary per agency. The main requirements that usually are the same throughout every agency is that you do have to have at least one successful pregnancy, usually with no complications. You have to be financially stable, meaning you're not relying on the compensation as like an income as a job because surrogacy is not a job. You know, they just have to make sure that you are able to care for yourself and your family because there is certain things that you actually have to be reimbursed for, so you have to front the money for. Another one is that you do have to like be somewhat mentally stable or emotionally stable. I said emotionally stable in my TikTok video and people were kind of like, really? And I didn't mean it like rudely. I meant it as like, you can't have any serious mental issues because with surrogacy obviously it's a big decision and some women could actually become attached to the baby that they're carrying so it's best that you know you have a good mental state to be able to go through the process of surrogacy and not get attached and have the lowest possibility of getting postpartum depression which i know i said Postpartum depression does go based on your hormones and stuff, but 
the more stable you are mentally, the lower risk you are to have problems afterwards mentally. I feel like I'm not explaining this right. So I hope I am explaining this right, not offending anyone. <laughs> and then of course those are, there's the age requirement. Other than that, I really can't think of anything else for general requirements. If you really sincerely are interested in becoming a surrogate, it's just best to research an agency that you would be applying to and just ask them what their requirements are because again it does vary from agency to agency so that's probably the best thing that you could do hopefully that answered that question <laughs> how did your parents and family feel about you being a surrogate uh my family was actually pretty supportive uh and my friends i did have a couple people that were just kind of I guess you can say worried. They wanted to make sure that I understood all the risks and I did reassure them that I did do research and I, you know, talked with the agency for a while until I decided it was something I wanted to do because I wanted to make sure I had a full understanding of the process of surrogacy and everything that goes into it, all the risks that you are taking. And so once I reassured them and everything, they were really, really supportive. I don't think I've had any family member or friend that was negative to me about it. So yeah, they were they were pretty awesome about it. What made you want to become a surrogate? So I actually had a friend on Facebook and she shared her journey of surrogacy and I caught one of her posts like really early on in her surrogacy journey and I was just so intrigued. So I ended up messaging her and asking her a bunch of questions. She was really informative and then she actually referred me to her agency where I contacted them, asked them more about the process and I even did research on my own even though Google is not the best reference. Um, but it definitely did help and then of course talking with the agency and I just decided that I wanted to be a surrogate. I wanted to help someone have a baby that either couldn't or didn't want to be pregnant. There's so many different reasons why people have surrogates carry for them. And I think I kind of just looked back on my miscarriages that I had, even though they were early on and they were technically chemical pregnancies. Like I remember how crushed I was. And so it kind of made me think about how there's so many other people that struggle for so long and then eventually can't conceive and it it just it broke my heart i can't imagine being in that situation and just feeling so crushed and defeated so that's also why i decided that i wanted to help someone because if i can help someone if i am fertile and i can carry i wanted to give that gift to someone <sighs> And so uh, here I am. <laughs> I also have a lot of people ask me how many times I have been a surrogate. This is my first time being a surrogate and it will most likely be my last time, my, my first and only time being a surrogate. Uh, I think a lot of people or some people think that surrogacy is a career and people just go around popping out babies. There are people that do it multiple times. I'm not sure how many times you can like do it until you can't do it anymore. I'm really not sure, but there's, there's plenty of people who only do surrogacy one time just to help someone out. And I think that's gonna be my case because right now my decision is probably that I won't be a surrogate again, but that could change. Because I've also had a lot of surrogates say that they said that and then they ended up being a surrogate again. But for right now, especially since we want to try for another child of our own after this, I'm just not sure how I will feel after, after that. And so I'm kind of just going to go based on how I feel, how my body feels. Uh, because surrogacy is a lot. It's a lot on your body. It's a lot on your family meaning like you know your husband and your children and stuff you know it's a lot to go through and so yeah i'm not quite sure if i'll do it again but we will see how did you find the family that you were matched with so i actually got matched with the mother through the agency because as you guys know i'm a surrogate through an agency so you actually fill out a profile 
and then the agency starts showing your profile to possible intended parents that are looking for a surrogate and once an intended parent is interested in your profile then you have like an interview with the intended parents through like video chat usually and you kind of ask each other questions kind of get to know each other and then you decide both sides decide whether they want to match with each other the surrogate and the intended parent and so it's kind of like a double-sided decision, but the intended parents are the ones that kind of look through the profiles of the surrogates to find one that they are interested in, and then it becomes like a two-sided decision. I just wanna make sure that I am like answering as many questions as I can because I would hate to like, I mean, I guess you guys can answer or ask me questions in the comments as well, and I can answer more, but I just wanna try to get the majority of them in this video. Another one is that do you talk with the mother regularly? And yes, I do try to talk to her at least once a week, um, whether it's sending her pictures or just seeing how she's doing and her checking up on me. We've been trying to do video calls at least once a week but lately she's been pretty busy and um so i just try to at least check in with her once a week and update her i send her pictures i send her videos whenever i get them i send her updates from my appointments as well so yeah we do we do keep in contact at least at least once a week but usually more what happens if the parents don't want the baby anymore it's very rare it's very rare that that would happen because the intended parents put so much time and effort and money into having a surrogate carry for them. So usually that they don't end up not wanting the child that they just put all of this work and time into having someone else carry for them. I do know that it has happened where usually because the surrogate has bonded with the baby that the intended parents don't want the baby anymore but that's still very rare if that was to happen usually the baby would go up for adoption i would assume unless the surrogate well the surrogate would have to adopt the baby anyway even if even if the parents didn't want the baby because the surrogate is not the legal guardian of the baby at least in the u.s I've heard that in the UK, the surrogate is deemed the legal guardian of the baby, which kind of like doesn't seem right to me. It's a little sketch to me because it's not biologically their baby if they're a gestational surrogate. And so in the US, you actually have to like have a legal document in place where a judge deems the intended parents the legal parents of the baby. So it's all done before birth. And so if they decide that they don't want their baby, that's, they kind of have to figure that out on their own. I've also been asked what if the surrogate becomes attached to the baby and doesn't want to give the baby up. That's still the same situation where the surrogate has no legal right to the baby. Honestly, in reality, it would just be a really horrible and traumatic separation for not only the surrogate but the parents and the baby which is why it's so important that the surrogate does not become attached and is also why the surrogates go through an extensive psychological evaluation just so they understand everything that goes on in surrogacy and just to kind of make sure that there's not a huge risk of them becoming attached to the baby that they're carrying because that would be a really traumatic thing for not only them, but the intended parents as well. But again, the surrogate has no legal right or responsibility for the baby. So even if they became attached, they still wouldn't be able to keep the baby and they can try to fight for it, but they are probably not gonna win, especially if they're a gestational surrogate and the baby is not biologically theirs. Also, when you do give birth as a surrogate, at least when you give birth in like a hospital, the doctors usually hand the baby over to the parents right after birth and they take them into another room to bond and do skin to skin with and everything while the surrogate goes into another room and recovers. So there's not really a way for the surrogate to like sneak away with the baby. I mean, if they pulled that off, that would be interesting. And I've heard stories of it 
And if a surrogate did try to get away with a baby, they would probably go to jail and they would be sued and be in a lot of trouble. So that's, that's that. <laughs> but I think other than that, that, those are really the main questions I get. I'm really hoping I'm not missing any. If I didn't answer a question that you have, please leave them down in the comments below so that I can answer them. Maybe if I get a ton, I'll make another Q&A video. Um, but if you do have any other questions, leave them down below in the comments and I would love to answer them. My pregnancy brain has been horrible, so I'm sure I missed a couple questions. <laughs> I hope this was really informative and you guys got a lot of information out of it. And I appreciate so much the love and support that I've received. It's literally, I don't even know how to process this, process it sometimes. Uh, I've definitely been blown away with all the love and support. So I just want to let you guys know that I love you and I appreciate you. And I'm so happy to have you a part of my, a part of my life because you are. Anyways, that is it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Please give it a thumbs up. Give it a thumbs up so I know you liked it. And uh, if you aren't already, make sure you subscribe to my channel if you want to hear more about the end of my surrogacy journey. And just follow our family in general because I will be documenting when we do try for our second child as well. And um, we will see you in our next video. Bye.